Okay, so IT security diagnostic exam. We're going to have a start here. We'll have a quick look around the screen before we go. We have our navigation buttons up here at the left. Top right corner, we have suspend test and end test. Down along the bottom, we have our question numbers, 1 through to 65. And then we have our flag test, clear and answer button. We also have an answer button down the left hand side. Either one of them is fine to use. So we have the main question area here. This is a multiple choice type question. So these are the way they're going to be the, uh, the majority of them. So which one of the following best describes the relationship between data and information? And it gives us four possible answers here. Data and information are the same. Data is raw input and information that information is based on. Information is unorganized data. And information is any data that is in digital form. So data is raw input that information is based on. So think of if you have data could be bus 10 p.m. Whereas information is going to be the bus leaves at 10 p.m. So information is data that has been processed. And we answer. So we click into it and we click on answer. The next one then. Which one of the following best describes cybercrime? Broadband connection that it with little or no access to the internet. Theft of computers, smartphones, or other devices, repeated failed attempts to log on to a computer, or illegal activities by means of computer networks. So you can see here cybercrime. With these questions, there'll always be one standard answer, and there may be two, maybe that are nothing to do with the question at all. So you can see here illegal activities by means of computer networks. So that's what cybercrime is. It's it's getting your data, getting your information or anything like that over computer networks. So we click on answer then. Which one of the following is not a possible threat to data? Employees, service providers, screen resolution or Trojans. Now do be careful with these ones. Make sure you read the question properly. So which one is not a possible threat of, to data? So we have here employees, so they are a threat to data, they can steal other people's data, service providers, um, and then screen resolution and Trojans. So the only one that is not a threat to data is your screen resolution. So it has absolutely nothing to do with data, it's there just to show you your screen and the size and the resolution. So there's nothing to, to do with it. So we click in there and we go answer. Okay, next question, number four. Which one of the following is an example of a threat to data from extraordinary circumstances? Lost password, cracking, fire, or cybercrime? The main thing in this is it's extraordinary circumstances. So it's something that's not going to happen every day or you'd like to think it wouldn't happen here. And the answer here is fire. So you could lose your data or a threat to data. Your computer may be in a building and it may go on fire or something like that. Cybercrime can happen. It's not extraordinary. It's happening every day. You can lose your password. Cracking is just in there just to add an, a, an answer to it. So sometimes you may find that some of the things they have in there make no sense. We're not worried about the answers that are wrong. We're more worried about the ones that are right. So we click on answer. Which one of the following is a typical threat to data from using cloud computing? So we have a couple of answers here. We have shredding, loss of privacy, identity theft, and restricted access. So the answer here, which one of the following is a typical threat to data from using cloud comp computing is the loss of privacy. So the reason for loss of privacy is if you have a file that you're storing on the internet and you... Um, give someone a link to it and the link can be given anyone with that link can have access to that file and we answer so this question asks to fill in the blank something is a characteristic of information security that ensures the non-disclosure of data except to another authorized person so confidentiality accessibility integrity or availability so confidentiality is a characteristic of information security that ensures the non disclosure of data except to another on a, on a, another authorized person so confidentiality is the answer there let me click on answer which one of the following best describes why you should protect your personal information to prevent computer virus attacks to protect the computer from defragmentization to reduce the risk of identity theft, 
or to avoid losing backed up data files. So why should you protect your personal information? So it's to reduce the risk of identity theft. Okay, the others are risks, but not because of personal information. So we click on answer. So which one of the following best describes the reason for protecting commercially sensitive information? So commercially is the big word there. And the answer here is to prevent the theft of financial details. So why would we protect different things like credit card details or PayPal passwords or anything? And it's to prevent the theft of financial details. Again, the other ones may be risks, but not commercially. Answer. Which one of the following is the main principle of data protection legislation? So to protect personal data, to protect technical data, to protect statistical data, or to protect financial data. Data protection is always there to protect the individual. So it's always there to protect you. So it's to protect personal data is the answer here. So we click on answer. Which one of the following best describes the data subject? An organization who posts entries on social media sites, an individual who provides their personal data to a data controller, an individual who carries out data processing, or an organization who encrypts data without a user's con consent. Again, like in the last question, a data subject is a person who provides the data. So the data subject is you. So it's an individual who provides their personal data to a data controller. And we click answer. Which one of the following best describes how ICT guidelines are used in an organization? To provide tax authorities with important up-to-date financial information, to inform customers about personal information protection, to provide employees with a set of rules that define general computer use, or to inform managers about training and competence status. So it's to provide employees with a set of rules. So that's how guidelines, so if you have employees working, it's to show your employees how to use the computers properly and how they should conduct themselves. Answer. Which one of the following best describes the purpose of social engineering? Password cracking, information gathering, ethical hacking, and network sniffing. So social engineering is phishing or farming or any of them other things. And the purpose of it is for information gathering. So information gathering is your answer there. Which one of the following is a method of social engineering? Creating accounts on several social networking sites, uploading videos to, on the blog very frequently, sending email that falsely claims to be from a legitimate source, and linking to many websites from social networking sites. So it's that number three there, sending email that falsely claims to be a legitimate source. So it's social engineering could be the likes of a bank or someone posing as a bank, sending you emails, wanting you to complete a form or from Apple saying that your iCloud has been hacked and it wants you to go and do it. So that's social engineering. So it's sending emails that falsely claims to be from a legitimate source. And we hit answer. Number 13, which one of the following best describes a direct consequence of identity theft? Your keyboard or mouse may stop working. Your broadband connection may suffer from reduced speed. Your computer may take longer to start. Or your email account may be accessed by someone else. So these other three here, they, there's, they're nothing to do with the, the answer at all. So the answer is this one. Your email account may be accessed by someone else. So if someone captures your identity or gets it, your information, they may um, access your emails. Answer. Which one of the following is a method of identity theft? Erasing, skimming, formatting or downloading? So the, the following method is skimming. Okay, the other ones aren't erasing, so it's going to delete things. Formatting is going to format hard drives, that type of thing. And then downloading is downloading files from the internet or similar. So skimming is the answer there. And we click on answer. Which one of the following best describes the effect of enabling an application to run macros? Macros are small computer programs that run within a computer program. Your computer will be more technically stable. Your, your computer will be more energy efficient. Your computer will be more risk of, at risk of viruses. And your computer will be more at risk from power outages. 
So again, three of the answers there don't really mean anything. Two of them definitely don't. The answer is this number three. So your computer will be more risk from viruses. Macros, as I said earlier, are a small computer program that can be run within a computer program. And they can be very effective, but they can also contain viruses or can be made to contain viruses. So sometimes you just may want to check if a computer program asks you can it run vir can it run macros. Won't happen that often. You just might want to check just to be, be sure that you know where the macros are coming or what the macros are doing. Answer. Which one of the following is a disadvantage of data encryption? The strength of an encryption is decreased if the key has few characteristics. The strength of the encryption is decreased if the key has many characteristics. The encryption data cannot be deleted unless it's first decrypted, or encrypted data cannot be copied unless it is first decrypted. Most important thing with these is read the question slowly. So which one of the following is a disadvantage of data encryption? And the answer here is the strength of encryption is decreased if the number of if the key has a few characters. Okay? So if your encryption um is it's like you having a password if a password has 10 characters it's going to be harder to crack than if a password has three characters so the more characters that the encryption uses so 256 bit encryption or whatever encryption it's using the harder it will be to decrypt or the harder it'll be to unencrypt so answer where should you click to encrypt the files in the folder? So we know that we can't go in to look at it here, it's not gonna let us, but if we click on the advanced button there, that would bring us into more options, and within there, that would allow us to encrypt the files in that folder. So we click on it, you can see you get that small green anywhere across there, you can do it, and we click on answer. Okay, this type of file here you can see, or this type of question, it has a Microsoft Word file at the bottom, it has the question area at the top, and it also has, um, so we have to go in and do, an, do a program. So what we're going to do is, we're going to go ahead, it says open the file named internet from the Z drive, apply, pass, uh, apply the password network to open the document, and then save the in internet file. If a question is shown asking convert, click no. So it's telling you exactly what's going to happen. So in simple terms, what we're going to do is we're going to open up a file. We are going to apply a password to that file. We're going to save it. And if it comes up with an option, we're going to click on no. So we go to file and open. It gives us the options here. Where do we want to open it from? We're going to open it from our computer. So we click on computer. And then we're going to go to browse because we want to find we could go to the z drive straight from there we want to go here's our internet document so we click on internet document and we click on open and here it has the file open for us so once we have the file open here it wants us to apply the password and the way we apply a password is we go to file and then save as once we go to save as we're going to save it to the z drive in the same location once we have it saved in the same location, we want to go to our tools down here at the very bottom left hand, right hand corner. And then we want to go to general options. So once we click on general options, it says password to open. And we put in the network exactly as it is case wise, the exact same. And we go OK. It says re-enter the password like anything else you would have done. We put network in again, we click on OK, and then we click on save. It comes up, the document is encrypted. It says up here that it, does, it doesn't want us to do it, so we just click on no, and that is the question done. And then we click on answer. So quite a long question there. Just make sure you take the steps step by step and do exactly what they're asking you to do on it. Which one of the following best describes what can be used to conceal malware on a computer? So a folder, a modem, a Trojan or a driver. So a Trojan can be used to conceal malware. So a Trojan is like a Trojan horse in the story. It's a program that looks perfectly fine, but once opened, it would run a malware on it. So just be sure that the, the computer programs that you're using, you know exactly what they are. And we click on answer. Which one of the following best describes malware? 
software that is generally low quality, software that is obtained at no cost for the user, software that is copied in violation with the license agreement, or software that is the